Good morning. I'm delighted to be here in Sherbrooke. Uh, I, I didn't actually get to hear the introduction, so I don't know what she said about me. So I'm, uh, if there are expectations there, I hope I can live up to them. <laughs> um, but it is, uh, it's, it's a delight to talk about my favorite subject in education. And that subject is, is context. But before I go and define that and get into the material, I'd like to get a sense of the audience here of uh, what venues and settings and professions you represent. Be wonderful if we could have everybody introduced, but that might take us two days, and uh, then I wouldn't get a chance. Um, how many of you are classroom teachers here? Yes, I, I love the wave in the hands, like the first ones that understand the uh, English, and then I can tell how many of you. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, how many of you are uh, a, a administrators? Yes, uh, concentrated over here, okay, in a few groups. Uh, 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 psychologists? Ah, a table over here, they're congregating and sprinkled through. Uh, psychoeducators? Yes, some. Uh, behavioral technicians? Okay. So we have a large uh, range. How many of you are parents? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> How many of you have been children? There, okay. Now, now we got it. <laughs> As I said, what I want to talk to you today is about context. Context is a difficult subject. Context literally means to weave together. Context is usually invisible. That which weaves together, those threads are invisible in society. We don't actually see them. Culture is meant to provide them. And so when culture goes into chaos, when culture is changing too fast, as it is now, the amount of change in 10 years would have been similar to the change 100 years. It would have taken 100 years to create. And so when this happens, we lose context. And what I'm, we lose the context to parent, and we lose the context to teach. And in fact, the most important context of all in a society is the context in which to raise children. And so that is the topic that I'm going to talk about. Uh, let me introduce it in, a, in a, a different way. That there are signs, and certainly some of you who have been in the field for some years, uh, will have the sense that teaching is actually getting more difficult. Teaching is getting harder. This despite the fact that we've never had more books telling us how to teach. We've never been more trained in pedagogy and curriculum. Our curriculum has never been better honed, and we have technology that our predecessors could never even have dreamed about. And yet, despite all of these advantage, advantages, those of you that have been in the field for 25, 30 years will undoubtedly feel the sense that it isn't getting easier, it is getting harder. And this is happening throughout Western civilization. I just returned from a, a trip to Germany uh, addressing problems there. I had been to Japan to address an, and a, a conference there on the educational system. And all over the place, United States and Canada, is that the educational system seems to be running into trouble, that teaching seems to be getting harder. When it, it gets harder, we focus even more on technology, curriculum, and pedagogy. Those seem to be the three things that gather our, in, our, our notice, uh, but 
what the problem seems to be is none of these three. In fact, all three together don't make up a very significant part of the learning equation. We could even add intelligence to this, and it too uh, doesn't make up a very large part of the learning equation. The other factor that I'm going to talk about, and what I've called the teachability factor, is the factor of context. The factor that involves a child's receptiveness to being taught, readiness to being taught, a desire to learn, the psychological factors that create the context in which we do our job. And so the idea here is, again, that we are losing this context, and so we need to become aware of it. We never need to become aware of something when it works. As long as your car works, you can remain blissfully ignorant of what is underneath the hood. But it's when it doesn't work that you require some knowledge about it. And it's as education is running into difficulty that we need to be able to attend to what is the problem and become aware of this thing called context, uh, which is the most important and pivotal factor, pivotal factor in the educational system. I don't come to you as a teacher. My wife is a teacher. I have two daughters who are teachers. I don't come to you as a teacher. I come to you as a developmental psychologist. My first assignment when I had received my doctorate was to actually consult for uh, three prison schools. These schools were for young offenders. Uh, they were in different prisons. And my job was to consult with the teachers in this. I was completely unprepared for this job. Uh, I had no idea what I was getting into. And it, uh, the first thing that impressed me is that the, the, the adolescents that I was working with were, were smart enough. Uh, certainly there were learning disabilities there. There were kinds of uh, uh, behavioral problems there. But what couldn't be explained is that most of these kids were not functioning beyond a grade two or three or four level. And the teachers were completely dedicated. I've never seen such a group of dedicated teachers. They were willing to turn themselves inside out to make learning occur. And yet very little of their teaching translated into learning. And that's the frustration. When our teaching doesn't translate into learning, it gets very discouraging. Now at the end of the day, and you've put everything into it, and how much of our teaching has actually translated into learning. And so that started a long process. I was also teaching at the University of British Columbia. And I was teaching courses in developmental psychology and, and uh, adolescent psychology and, and personality theory and, and so on. And I b began to try and put the pieces together of why it is that some children despite the fact that they have excellent teachers, despite the fact that the curriculum uh, is, is, is matched to their ability, uh, despite the fact that there is excellent pedagogy, are not learning. And so uh, hopefully, they, uh, as I share this with you, it will make sense. Uh, it's not something I believe that we were meant to know. So if you feel that if, you, if it is something that, you, uh, uh, that your eyes are open to, I believe that this part was always meant to be invisible. But it's only because it's not working that we need to open our eyes to it. We need to see it because something needs fixing in our society. Something needs fixing in our educational system. We need to become conscious of this. So hopefully it will make sense to you. The focus then, by, uh, by definition, will be on those students uh, who have trouble learning and behaving. This will apply to all students, <coughs> but mostly those students uh, who do have trouble learning and behaving, even though they have ample intelligence and ample opportunity to learn, that again, the teaching is not translating into learning. So these, uh, we will focus on, on these particularly.